hi and welcome to this first in a series, a short series of videos which I've made uh, showing the renovation of a, an old cottage, an old house. The house dates from the 1950s and we had worked with the owner of this house before in that we had insulated the roof in this house with open cell foam. You'll see the clips of the foam and the roof uh, once we go inside on the internal shots. But because we had a good relationship with this customer and they had uh, faith in us, I suppose, is the best way to describe the relationship. Um, and because I have a background in construction, I took on the entire project management of this renovation and quickly into the discussions so as not to make the video too long, we decided to gut the internal of the house completely. The front uh, room, which are now uh, walking through here, and then the, um, the back room. And uh, the reason for this was that the internal wall were taking up far too much space, were poorly configured and caused the house to be dark, caused the house to be cold and damp. This house was cold even in a warm summer's day. It was relatively cool. And um, dare I say it, the, the, the highest performing part of the house in terms of insulation was actually the roof where we had insulated. So we gutted the walls, knocked down three chimneys. And in the course of the video, you'll see the concrete was poorish and uh, it was generally poor quality. It wasn't reinforced, but it was typical for the time. I'm not hating on the construction standards of the time. This is the way houses were built back then before modern uh, concrete um, reinforcement techniques were uh, mainstream. So we demolished the interior of the house and it gave us a blank canvas to work on. We dug out the floors as well because, again, there was no damp proof membrane, no damp proof course in the floors to stop dampness migrating up once the house was being heated. Once we had the floors dug up, um, we decided to implement what we call a suspended floor detail. Rather than the traditional way of pouring a concrete subfloor, insulating it with panel insulation, and then putting a screed on top of it, we decided a much faster approach would be to install a trellis of timber work. Uh, we, in this case, we used nine inch by two inch timbers, and we spanned them uh, across the floor, supported in the middle by a pier wall. And we also ensured that this uh, uh, construction detail, very importantly, was uh, ventilated underneath so that uh, there was no risk of dry rot uh, building up in the house, uh, in the floors in particular. And then we placed a spacer system in between the, uh, the voids created between the uh, floor joists. And this spacer system uh, serves the function of not allowing the foam go down and hit the subfloor and create um, blockages and all sorts of problems so the spacer system that we've nailed between the floor joists here is holding the foam in place and then on top of that spacer we sprayed approximately five inches of closed cell vapor barrier foam this is to give us good air tightness give us high thermal performance and dare i say it it does add some structural rigidity to the floor joists it stiffens them up once this was done we then shaved off or scarfed off the foam so that the ribs of the timber now became visible and then onto that we will be fixing our floor ply. That concludes this part of the video. Uh, subscribe for future parts where we install the walls and the roof sections. Thank you for watching. 